Hello YouTube friends. A little while ago I was visiting a friend of mine and I in a spur of the moment I said she was doing a kind thing for me and we actually Anna and I filmed it so you will be able to see that kind thing <laughs> but I said in return I will make you a cushion and I just it was off the top of my head so I thought go on I'll make it now so I've just been through uh, this box here is full of all sorts of scraps and bits and pieces of every colour under the sun and I've just been through and picked out all well quite a lot of the greens and the pinks because why wouldn't you want green and pink and this cushion then I'm gonna make um, I've, and I've got them all here a big pile of greens and pinks and I had an idea that I might make a, a log cabin a very scrappy log cabin with greens on one side and pinks on the other so it's not like I'm offering this as a tutorial. It might might be just be fun if we, uh, while I'm making this, if we make it together. Because log cabin's a lovely block, isn't it? Uh, and this will just be one log cabin block. Uh, but then you go on to make loads of them and you can make all sorts of beautiful shapes. I really like it. So I've got all my greens. Uh, I might just take this overhead so I can do the cutting overhead so that you can see uh, I've got, haven't decided yet what size to do the strips, um, but we'll cut some strips. I think I've actually in here somewhere. <laughs> I've got there. Yeah, look, I've got some strips already. I know that's not pink, but it'll go in with the pink somewhere. And so, how wide is that? It looks to me like two inches. So I might do. It's actually just less. I might do two inch strips, which will finish at inch and a half, and then we'll go. Yeah, shall we do that? I mean, we could do wonky log cabin, couldn't we? Anyway, whatever we're going to do, I'm going to bring us in overhead now and cut some strips of fabric uh, for this uh, project that I want to do for, uh, for my friend Philippa. And first thing then, I'll sort out uh, greens and pinks. I'll put all the pinks out here for now and we'll keep the greens here and we'll cut some green strips. Nice. And I cut this one two and a half inches square and that can be the middle of our log cabin. Well, some of these are really short so I'll sort them into lengths. I mean there's obviously there's a much much better ways of making this um, thing but this one will be fine. We need a paler pink don't we? Here's a paler pink. What about that? Yeah, we need some of that in. I've cut a strip of that because these are all quite dark pinks, aren't they, Norma? And so there's our centre square there. And then we've got some short greens and some longer greens. So let's get the greens in some sort of order. And then we'll take them over to the sewing machine and start stitching these together. Oh, lots of spotties. Oh, let's see what we think about that. Uh, short ones, which you need. Longer ones. I wasn't so sure about that colour. It looks a bit muddy against all of these. I'm going to put that one out because we've got loads of greens. Uh, they may not all be long enough, but there's a nice long one. Another long one. Oh, different size dots. That'll look nice. And here's a very long dark one because we'll try and go light to dark um, in that traditional way that Log Cabin does. So that's my strips then. And I need a few more pinks and some pale pinks. So what I'll do is I'll, because um, those are all quite the same value, all those pinks, I think. 
That one's a bit pale, but it's quite long. Oh, that's okay. So I'm going to just seek out in my other drawer over there to see if I can find some better pinks. Now, traditionally, the whole thing with log cabins is that the um, the centre square is red to represent the fire, and then all the logs going around the outside are the cabin. And so uh, I'm going to keep a nod to that, and I'm going to have a, a pink centre, not a red one. So I'll just find some more pink fabrics. I think I've got some in the drawer over here. I'm sure a lot of you watch Bonnie Hunter, uh, and if you don't, I'll leave a link to her um, Quiltsville in the description box below. Uh, she does these lovely um, podcasts where she's sewing away on vintage sewing machines, which, you know, I like I like a bit of reliability about my sewing machine and I can't fix them. So I like my sewing machines to work. <laughs> so, but she has this fantastic vintage sewing machines and she uh, does all sorts of projects. Uh, what, one of the things I really like, so instead of using thread bunnies like I do, at the beginning and the end of a row, which, you know, it's a little tiny bit of thread that you sew onto. She does what she calls leaders and enders, where she sew, where for another project entirely, she sews two blocks together, which means that she's got a jump on the next quilt that she's going to do. So I've never got my um, act together to do leaders and enders, but maybe that's something I'll have a go at doing in the future. For now, though, I'm going to, um, I've got a load of pinks, a load of greens, my centre square here, and I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew them together now. So I'm not really doing this as a tutorial because there are hundreds of tutorials on how to do log cabin out there, but uh, we'll stitch it together and uh, that'll be fun. And look who's here. Anna, wave. Oh, hello. <laughs> Anna's here doing some video editing. Uh, for future videos um, for secret projects and she's got her headphones on so I don't think we'll bother her okay so uh, oh I think plugging in your sewing machine is a good idea isn't it that's better uh, I'm going to use my quarter inch foot because it's good to respect a quarter inch seam there's all sorts of ways of doing that you know there's a grid on your uh, on the base of your machine here and sometimes people I've seen stick a piece of um, like masking tape, decorator's tape on there or whatever but I like my little quarter inch foot uh, which is uh, just brilliant. So this is going to be my centre square, this pink one and so we'll start with a, the idea is that I'm going to start with a very pale colour I might as well cut it actually first I'll start with a nice pale against the pink. And we're off. I'm using my universal grey, which I use for absolutely everything. And it's a shame I'm not making two, because then I could run one off. This is where we need Bonnie's leaders and enders, isn't it? So I'll finger press that open. That's my first bit there. And then I've got a, this is a nice pale one here. I'll just cut the selvage off, don't need that. This would be a good thing to do with jelly roll strips, bits of leftover jelly roll strips that we've all got lying around because they're two and a half inches, aren't they? Yeah, this is annoying. Never mind doing it now. And I'm not going to press each seam, I'm just going to finger press them. So the next one, this is at the very beginning, you can get a bit stuck as to where to go and you could end up with a block called courthouse steps if you don't sew them on in the right way. So then the pale green one now needs to go on here. So let's see, is that a nice pale green? Yeah, that's good. Liking that one. So we'll go keep building our logs round and round and round our central fire here. Thank you. 
Another person I like to watch is Donna Jordan of Jordan Fabrics. And she um, she doesn't, she just snips the threads off at the end of each snip. Now, here's a tip. When you're deciding where to put the next strip, you need the side that has got, when you, once you've done the first few, you need the side that's got the most ends coming out. So this has got two ends here, this has got two ends here, but this has got three. So we need to put our next strip on here. And it's another pale green one and that's quite nice and short so that will go in there beautifully so we're gonna and that's like the best tip i can give you for sewing log cabin is when like now i'll show you i'll just trim this end off here now And when we finger press that one open, you can see that we've got two fabrics there, uh, one fabric there, but we've got three fabrics there. So that's where the next one's got to come. And it's got to be pink. So we'll choose a nice paley pink. That one will do nicely. And we'll put the pink in along here. Don't worry too much about nesting seams with this one because there are no seams that meet one another. But what I try to do is make sure I don't flip my seams. So I try to keep the, the seam. But, you know, uh, and here's another quilt uh, favourite of mine, Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And she said, when you're pressing, just press it. No one's going to turn your quilt over and say, well, look at those seams. <laughs> no one's going to do that. <laughs> Not in a scrappy little thing like this. I think when there's a lot of bulk coming together in a seam, it's good to make sure your seams nest. But that's not what's going on here. So now that it's, they're getting a bit longer, I'm just going to use the long edge here as a guide to cut that off. So now you can tell me where's the next strip going to go. It's going to go here, isn't it? One, two, three. And it's going to be green. Is that right? No, it's not right. So pink, pink, green, green, pink. It's going to be pink. <laughs> Nearly did green. So it's going to be, so it's green, green, pink, 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 pink. So it's going to be another pink. And now we start needing to get into slightly longer pinks. There's a pink. This one's this lovely um, Anna Maria Horner fabric, which is called pretty potent and these are echinacea flowers and I made um, in fact this is probably left over from a quilt I made for Anna and John for their wedding present because I made that I made them Anna Maria Horner in fact that's where I first got to know about her because Anna found the fabrics online and really liked them yeah I nearly put a green one on there guys Now we can see pink, 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 green, green. So this one, one, two, three, and it's green. So let's find a longer green. And I'll tell you what's lovely is that Anna is editing the video for the person I want to give this to. That's nice, isn't it? She can't hear me. Okay, I think we need to put pink and pink on there and then that might be big enough. Okay, so I'm going to show you then, I've pinned it onto the board here and I'm going to show you what I've done and how I'm going to do the next stage. Here's our log cabin block in the middle. And then this is a lovely piece of green, top and bottom. And then at the very top, there's a run of just scraps of pink. 
and I'm going to show you now how we're going to put all of that together to make a, a, a cushion that's got an envelope back and this means that you don't have to um to worry too much about how to attach these they're already attached so I'm going to go and get some bits of wadding now it's another thing to for this is a good way to use up some bits of wadding and we'll piece them together uh, and then we'll do the next bit which is going to be some quilting on this now I haven't made my mind up shall I hand quilt it or machine quilt it we all know when I get to that point so I'm going to go and find my wadding now but uh, that's um, I like how it looks so far so I've got my wadding my little bits of wadding that we all save these don't we <laughs> just for this very thing and um, I've laid down, I've made sure that the edge here, just tip you down a little bit more, is lovely and straight because I don't want this to overlap at all. So I'm just going to have that nice and straight and they're going to butt together like that so that you won't feel a bump in the finished thing. And that's perfectly fine. It's a little bit bigger all the way round. I'll get, I'll get some fabric to put on the inside of this and then we can start thinking about how to quilt it. So I'll go on a hunt for some for some inside fabric. You won't see this, uh, but uh, and I'd like it to be one continuous piece. That would be great not to have to join that. So I'll go and find something. I've chosen this to be the inside of the cushion. You're not going to see it, as I say, but it, you do need to have those three layers, just as if you were making a quilt. And now what I'm going to do, I've laid it all out and instead of pin basting it, because I've decided I'm going to machine quilt this, which I almost never do, but I've got an idea about how I'd like to quilt it. And so I'm going to thread baste it. I'm going to tack it. Now, um, you know, let's um, not worry too much about the quilt police. Spray basting would be perfect at this point, but I haven't got any of that. And I'm not, I'm, it's not something I'm going to do much or at all so I don't think there's um I mean maybe I'll get I'll invest in some spray based one of these days but for this small project what I'm going to do is um tack all over the place uh so that I can pull it out when the machine stitching is done it's a small project this so I'm chosen a blue which isn't in here much or at all and I'm going to I know exactly as well where I'm going to um, stitch, so I shall do my tacking stitches, avoiding where that's going to be. So I'll just do. I'm just going to do some big tacking stitches just to hold those three layers together. And this could take some time. It just occurred to me that I could put a little secret heart inside with a little bit of um, of that, what's it called? Bonder web? Well, anyway, I've ironed a little bit of pink fabric with a bit of that on the backing. I'm just going to take it off there now. It's not hemmed or anything, it doesn't have to be. Just take this uh, backing off now. And that's the sticky bit now that will iron on. And no one will ever see this. And Philip will never even know it's there, but I will. So this is the, this is, it's going to go just there, right there in the middle. And it'll get all sewn over when, uh, when I do the quilting. There we go. Don't even need to think about it anymore. It's just a little bit of love inside. So I've thread basted all of this now with my little secret heart and it's all the three layers are all holding together beautifully. So I'm just going to swap out my um, quarter inch foot for the walking foot and then um, choose maybe pink, a really nice cerise pink and do some um, some stitching, some bit random sort of stitching on here and also on the green because the pink will look fantastic. So let's go over and do that now. I've got my walking foot on now and I've got this fantastic cerise thread in the top here and the reason why I don't like machine quilting is because usually the piece is so big 
and I fight with it to get it underneath the presser foot uh, and through the throat of the machine. This is small enough. Baby quilts are small enough. So I'm not averse to machine quilting. You know, I'm not a hand quilting um, aficionado and would never dream of machine quilting. I will do it when it's something as small as this. So I'm go I've got the walking foot on. Now, I could free motion quilt this uh, with that particular foot, couldn't I? Drop the feed dogs and do that. I'm not proficient enough at that. It's something I would have to practice at and I want to carry on and finish this little cushion today. Um, so I just want to show you something through the window. What does she think she's doing in there? <laughs> she's escaped. And that's since the people came to put the cable in. If you can see that, that very muddy bit there, that's where the people came to put the cable in for the new broadband. And they made a hole in the back there where Eileen's run is. And so she's taking advantage of that now by living in the garden. So we'll have to do something about that. Bad goose. Okay then, so let's see if we can angle this down and then just do, I'm good, what I, my plan is, is to follow the track of the log cabin, cabin around, but in a kind of like a very random way. Let's see how we go. I'm not going to overthink this. Have a look at it now. Uh, you need to get in a bit closer to see that I've followed the line of the log cabin all the way round, and now I'm just going to find the knot. I'm just going to lift these stitches, these blue stitches out. Uh, even if I've sewn over them, they'll come out really easily uh, because they were spaced far apart, so that's not a problem. And then on the back. I've just for decorativeness, I've sewn one direction that way, the other direction that way. And again, we'll just snip out these blue threads. I've done a, uh, I've folded over the, this is going to be on the inside of the cushion. Oh, let's have a look at our heart, shall we? Oh, there it is. There it is, just secretly inside there. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now then, I'm going to trim the edges both sides and then I'm also going to trim this part here so that this is um I'll show you I'll do it rather than we'll do it I'll get the we'll just get all these loose threads out I hate loose threads everywhere and there are plenty of them so we'll get rid of all the loose threads I'm going to cut this edge here so that that can fold over and over and be tacked down so that we have a decorative edge on the outside of the cushion. So I'll do that now. That's better. And so now when I fold that over, that's better. That's how I want it. I want there to be that much edge sticking out so it's not too dominant. And that's probably going to be the only bit of hand stitching I've done on this, apart from the basting that I've done on here. Because now I'll do that first. I'll hand baste that first. So that edge is now hand stitched down. This edge is neatened off, but I machine stitch that because that's going to be on the inside of the cushion. And so now what I need to do is I need to trim these edges uh, so that uh, I can do the next stage. So, so the whole thing is now nicely trimmed. And then there's one, there's one little slip that you can make and it's about getting, this one has to be on the outside of the cushion because this one's the less pretty one. So that has to be on the inside, but 
the way to remember how to fold this now, you need to fold this one. Let's get that thread there, little stray thread. So the, the pretty one that you want on the outside has to go in first. So you fold that in first, like so. I need to tip you down a bit. So that one folds in first and goes two thirds of the way across. And this one folds in second and goes two thirds of the way across in the other direction. And making sure that the pretty one goes down first will mean it's on the outside. And now just making sure that everything's beautifully lined up and we've still got our walking foot on the machine, so that's OK. So now I'm going to get four pins because another error that can happen is um, when you're sewing along this edge here, this can flip out and, and not get caught in the seam that you want to sew. So we're going to make sure there's a pin here and putting a pin in also reminds you where it is because it's actually quite a lot of bulk to go over. And we're going to put a pin there and then the same here. Make sure it's nice and square. All lined up there. It's lovely. And then here where we want to make sure we catch this really well. So we'll put a pin there to remind ourselves that it's there. So we've got 14 here and just 14 and a half here. It's fine. So I'm going to take it across to the um, walking foot now and sew that very carefully along there, making sure that these extra thick bits all get caught in. And this will be our cushion finished. When I get to this bit here, I like to go backwards and forwards because when you put in the cushion in, it does have quite a bit of strain. So we're just going to take a run at it. And give it a little overstitch there. And the same here. So now we can turn this the right side round and I'm going to make sure that this corner comes out really sharp. You can poke it with a, the end of your scissors if you like. So I'll do that with all the corners like that. And because we folded it really carefully, this pretty bit is now on that side, which is where it needs to be. I'll just get my hand inside there and then I'm going to find a cushion pad to put this in and about an hour sorting through a few scraps it was about an hour ago and we have now a little log cabin cushion finished green and pink which are my favorite colors it would go on the lime green sofa this wouldn't it but it's going to go in philippa's house and i hope she likes it I'll find a cushion pad for it now, but that's a finish and I'm pleased with it.